So KX Insights broadly is our cloud-first data platform. There are three tiers to it from left to right, and they build on top of one another. The reason for having three tiers is that some of our customers need the flexibility to build from scratch the components that they need with full customization. And then we also have the ability to create some off-the-shelf components that you can pull in, customize, and deploy very quickly. So moving from left to right, you've got um, coding, kind of building yourself towards the right where you are deploying, configuring, getting something up and running very quickly. So KX Insights Core on the left is our time series data engine. Uh, it's the foundation of the Insights stack, but it is built on KDB Plus, which I think a good few of you here are fairly familiar with. The, uh, the ability that that brings is to ingest vast amounts of time series data to serve that from on-prem as well as cloud now. Moving towards the, the center, um, we're adding a lot of integration uh, in KX Insights that previously was quite difficult with KDB Plus. So we are bringing a Python interface that Ruben is going to touch on in a moment. We've got ANSI SQL support to make it very easy to access that data. We've got a REST client and server, as well as uh, logging and packaging utilities. So the Insights microservices build on top of that to create a set of components that you can very quickly configure, get up and running with. They will abstract away the plumbing of common components in time series data processing. So a lot of the, the first things you do when you create a KDB plant is you create you know, your, your ingest, your real-time database, your historical database. The microservices are designed to standardize that. So you don't need to build components from scratch. You've got something that you can deploy very, very quickly bring your own logic, um, and have something that will scale very easily out of the box. Then on the right-hand side at the top of the chain, we've got KX Insights Platform. And this is the end-to-end -end application, which is built on top of the microservices. It uses Kubernetes to coordinate and control those microservices. Um, so you get a lot of um, scaling, a lot of integration with cloud platforms. It runs on all of the, the three main hyperscalers. And the, the audience here is a bit different. So why would you choose one of these over the other? The Insights Core and the microservices lower the technical barriers to entry by opening up access to your data with your SQL, your Python code. Moving towards platform, you're taking that a step further. So the entire infrastructure of your plant is abstracted away. The user is presented with a visual way to configure your data pipeline. So you've got readers, operators, and writers. We'll take a look at that in just a moment as to how you can piece that together to actually ingest data, analyze it, and visualize it. It's not a no-code solution. It is still a product for technically-minded users, but it's designed to be easier to adopt for people coming from a more traditional data science background. So this is a high-level logical diagram. It's a fairly typical financial services use case. I think you know, these are the kinds of modules that um, a lot of us are implementing in, um, in our own plants. We have data of varying velocities. You've got historical and real-time data, reference data being merged so that you can analyze them in the context of each other. This kind of setup can be used for anomaly detection, um, you know, trade signal generation, alert publication, um, and you know, one of the examples we look at in a minute is, um, is backtesting and trade signal generation. The, the analytics and decision models in here can be defined using your own Python code, your own libraries, um, and I think Ruben's going to touch on a bit of that in a moment. But the, um, the, the result is that data scientists and quants can use the tooling that they're familiar with. So bring the, the skill set that you've already got, the tooling that you like working with, and deploy that into a very scalable plant without needing to worry about the plumbing. Then to visualize and, uh, and publish the results of that analysis, we have interactive reports so that business users who maybe don't necessarily need to know how the model was arrived at or created can still interact with it to see, well, what were the inputs, what were the outputs, what are the results that we've gleaned from the analysis. So it lets you do some very quick um, prototyping and deployment of business applications, you know, your pre- and post-trade analytics, your slippage, benchmarks, P&L, and so on. Um, but the particular example we look at here is the setup and backtesting of a simple trading strategy. So I'm going to cut over to a live environment here. And uh, I'm typing under my laptop here, so bear with me. 
So the, uh, this is a report in, in KX Insights platform. And the strategy being plotted here is very simple to moving average crossover. So we've got uh, two different moving average periods, a long and a short. We're using the momentum, uh, the crossover between the moving averages as a signal to go long or short the underlying. The strategy itself is fairly trivial, trivial but it's, um, you know, it's a placeholder. You can think of it as your logic here. Um, the charts in the middle here represent the, the raw trade prices coming in, as well as the, the long and the short moving average crossing over and back across that. And the red and the green then represent the, uh, the short and the long signals. So if we work backwards from here, how do we uh, assemble this from scratch? So what components do we need to produce this kind of analysis? At a fundamental level, we need a way to ingest streaming data. In this case, we've got trade prices coming in over Kafka. We need a way to apply our strategy's logic to that data in a scalable way to generate signals that we can actually action. Um, and then to calibrate that strategy in the first place, we also need a way to analyze historical data, to run our analytics against that data, and figure out what are the optimal parameters that we can plug in to this strategy um, to get the, uh, the optimal results. So um, we'll, we'll kind of reverse, uh, rewind back to the start of this process and see how we can create this kind of database um, and this set of analytics. So I'll take us back to the landing page. This is the, the front page of KX Insights platform. The overview page shows us a couple of wizards at the top. These guides can help you to create a database from scratch and deploy it, import data into it, as well as get a view on what's currently running. So these pipelines in the lower pane, these are ticking away, ingesting data. Some of them are streaming, some of them are batch loaders. Um, you can get a view on what's running here. You can inspect the, the diagnostics, you know, what each of them are doing. We're gonna start for our use case by building a database. So the, the build a database wizard here gives us a couple of t-shirt sizes that we can choose from. You've got a, you know, your starter, small, medium, large. These are just very quick defaults that you can use to get up and running. Obviously, these are not necessarily going to fit every use case. They can be completely customized before you deploy them. The idea is we've got some sensible defaults that you can very quickly uh, get up and running with without needing to worry about each individual setting along the way. So if we hit next here, we can now define the schema and we have a couple of ways of doing that. So you know, we can define it via the UI here, visually. You can import a file. Um, there's a, you know, a config file and a format that you can use to import entire data assemblies. So not just your database schema, but your, uh, your whole configuration of your plant. So you can have versioned import and export of your databases. Um, when you're happy with the config of your database, in this case, I'm not gonna uh, click through a whole load of columns for you, but once you've clicked through and hit deploy, you can start to import data into that database. And this is a set of readers that we can choose from. You've got some static and some, some uh, streaming options. On the static or the batch loader side, we have readers from all of the major hyperscalers, your, your GCP, Azure, uh, and S3 storage, uh, as well as F SQL servers. And then for streaming data, Kafka is the example we'll use in this case. We also have MQTT. And we'll be adding to this library as we go as well. This is just the, the first iteration. So we're going to use Kafka for this example. So if I select Kafka, I can set a host port here and a topic. Hit next, and we can decide what format the data is coming in. So I'm going to decode from JSON in this case. Decode each message as it comes in. And we now have a, uh, a choice. We can decode a table format. I've got some schemas loaded already, so I can choose one of those um, from a from menu here. So take my equity schema. Um, here's one we made earlier. So it's going to be a closed prices table that I'm going to load. You can tailor the, the types and the column names here if needed. And then choose where you're going to write that data to. So I'm going to write it to this particular database and this particular table. So if I hit open pipeline at this point, I'm given a visual representation of that data flow. And that lets me configure the, the readers, the operators, and the writers on that data. So I can click on each of these nodes and see what's happening at each step along the way. You'll notice that there are readers and writers along the left-hand side here. 
uh, we can drag and drop these. It's a, it's a visual interface that you can use to add additional readers, additional writers. You can merge streams. You can split them. Uh, you can do joins on your, you know, say, your reference and your streaming data, as well as add time windows. So I'm going to cut at this point to one we made earlier. And if I open up my pipelines library from the overview screen here, I've got an algo trading end-to-end -end pipeline. And this is one a little more elaborate where it's taking the same concept. We're reading in streaming data from Kafka. We're decoding it. And we are adding some, uh, some cleansing to that data. We're splitting the stream then. So we want to have the raw data persisted so that we can access that later. And we also want to do some calculations on that and save those in a different location in the same database. So I'm adding a 20 second timer window here and then adding some moving averages. So this is where the logic comes in, where you can say on uh, a certain period to do a long and a short moving average, drop your own logic in here. I'm using Q code in this case and then uh, writing those out. So this is it's not an actual live trading system. This is really a, a demo system, but we're sending out signals that can be used to route to an OMS potentially. Um, as well as an audit trail for logging purposes. So that's um, the, at a high level, the import, the operate on your data, persist that to a database. We've now got some data written somewhere where we can start querying it and producing some visuals on it. But we've just landed on some parameters here for our algo. So how do we actually decide what the appropriate uh, parameters are? Well, we've got, uh, before we hit deploy on this one, I'll just show you some options around this. So when we take, take the, uh, the pipeline that we want to deploy and actually execute that, we can specify some scaling options. And you can set, particularly when you're reading from Kafka, it's quite convenient to be able to set a minimum and maximum number of workers for scaling purposes. At runtime, there will be a dynamic uh, negotiation with the Kafka producer. And according to the topic partitioning on the source side, it will deploy uh, a suitable number of workers within the bounds that you've set. So we're also working on online auto scaling, so the, uh, the change can happen dynamically. Once that is, uh, is structurally OK, we want to figure out what the optimal parameters are. So I'm going to go to the Explore tab. And this is where we can start to query our data and see uh, you know, what are the the appropriate parameters. Let's run some historical queries and see what the, the historical data tells us about what we can apply to the streaming data coming in. So the top pane here, you'll notice the Explore tab is divided into a couple of sections here. The top pane is how we actually get data into our own workspace. So the, the query SQL and Q across the top here is the, the mechanism by which we extract data from the database. Query here leverages our API. It's a no-code query builder where we can specify the table we want from a drop-down, so the closed table that we wrote to earlier. We're going to save that, give it a name that we're going to use to refer to it in our local workspace. And then we can analyze that data away from the production plant where we're not contending for resources with any other users. The example we're going to use here is an SQL query. So we now have support for ANSI standard SQL. You can run that at a gateway level, and it will um, parse the query out, route it accordingly to the, the processes responsible for the relevant sections of the data, whether it's just in off the wire, you know, sitting on local disk, or in object storage somewhere. And then finally, of course, uh, queue, which we know and love. And you can execute your queue code uh, directly against the database also. I'm going to use the SQL example here um, to run a, a simple query and see what's in our closed table. So we've got um, some simple open, high, low, close data here. And we want to start running some analytics on that. So I'm going to toggle across to, you'll notice there's a Q and a Python toggle here. I'm going to start in Python mode. And we're using PyKX here again. This is just a glancing reference to PyKX. Um, Ruben will give you a bit more detail on that. But what we're doing is taking the result of our database query and converting that into a pandas data frame. From there, we can use the uh, standard pandas tooling that, um, that many of us would be familiar with to perform a rolling average calculation. So this is where you can start to loop over your parameters, see uh, what are the, the windows, the long and the short windows, that give us the best results. I've split my analysis in two here, so I'm, I'm going to toggle over to Q mode to continue that. 
just to show you can do the same analysis in queue and take it further. So we're adding the position calculation, some returns on the strategy, and compare, comparing the, uh, the benchmark, the underlying, versus the strategy. So um, let's, let's toggle over to the visual tab here and take a look at the, uh, the results of that. So the actual signals table here is showing us the, the two moving averages, just visualizing that against the, the raw price in the background. And then the performance table, so we can figure out, you know, over a certain time frame, does the strategy perform well? You can you know, sum the result of that time series, see how it performs in certain scenarios. And then once you're happy with that, uh, you can plug those parameters back into the pipeline that we've, um, that we've seen at the start. So we would be back into our algo trading pipeline, our moving averages node here. And this is the, uh, the piece of code that would take those parameters in to actually deploy it. Once we're happy with the, the calculations that we've uh, put together via the Explore tab and deployed into a pipeline, we can then cut back to how we actually visualize that. And you'll notice at the top here, there's a toggle between design and preview mode. This is your, your, uh, your publish loop, essentially. There's no compile and publish loop. You, it's a, what you see is what you get editor. You can drag and drop components from the left-hand side here. So we've got data grids, canvas charts. You've got interactive elements that let you specify uh, symbols, you know, drop downs, date pickers, and so on. So you can filter on the client side and have that feed into the queries that we saw in the Explore tab. So again, it's simple, name, value, pairs. And we can take a look at how that's configured. So if I select one of these components while I'm in edit mode, I can take a look at the data source. And it's a pretty simple set of, uh, of parameters that you can pass in to populate that. And once you're happy with the set of components you've got, toggle back to preview mode. That's a, a pretty quick uh, finished product, but we can also put together uh, a fairly basic dashboard from scratch. So if we go to a new report here, design, let's see, just to give you a feel for the options, we can add uh, you know, data grid, canvas chart, populated data source. and get that up. So you, know, you can very quickly add some data there if you want to add additional charts. This is a, a visual, it's a chart rather than a grid, but you can use the same data source to populate that um, and very quickly prototype visuals that way. So you can layer the complexity in your chart um, and, uh, and build something up quite quickly. Let's reset the range there, make it look a bit more sensible. So you can see how you can very quickly um, prototype a, a data pipeline, get data in, run some analytics on it, and produce a visual. Uh, the prototyping makes it very fast to get up and running, and the scaling in the background um, via Kubernetes looks after the plant. Uh, so that's the whistle-stop version of Insights Platform. Um, if you have any questions, happy to take them at this point.